Amen. John chapter 15. John chapter 15. We're in John 14 this morning. We're going to look in John chapter 15. John chapter 15. As Lucas would say, John. <laughs> hey, man, where's your tie? I don't care. Standards. I wasn't allowed to slack on Sunday night. No. When I, well, I guess when I was, I guess, oh, don't look at me like that. I guess when we were, he's like, don't, don't put attention on me. Uh, mm, you're picking on me. You tired? Man, that's what moms use excuse. That's what moms use excuses for babies. They're just tired. What's wrong with you? I'm just tired. Tired. Tired not. Oh, okay. All right. All right. All right. I forgot about that, man. You don't have to get all offensive. You're yelling at me. Do you want to take your tie off? Do you want to take your tie off? Take it off. Take it off. You guys want to take your ties off? Let's take our ties off. Let's do it. Take the ties off. In honor of Brother Pitt. Ah! <laughs> Amen. Good stuff. Hey, now I look like one of those. Uh, now I need jeans and one of those little face microphones and some some uh, some stylish snazzy shoes. Uh, do what? A pilot? No, a newfangled preacher. Newfangled. Who uses that word? A modern day preacher. Uh, uh, go ahead and just lay it out on the pew. Mucho gracias, senor. In honor of Brother Pip and Lucas having a I'm hot and tired uh, day, we can take our ties. <laughs> John chapter 15. John chapter 15. Uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for a good spirit in this church. Thank you for, Lord, I don't know if anybody else noticed it, but uh, today's service this morning, it um, felt like you were here. I'm not saying that you're not here any other time, but man, oh man, did it have a good spirit. Uh, there was a, an energy, uh, uh, electricity in the air. There was an excitement about church. Lord, I'd have ask that you'd help us to carry that through the week and then again back to church. Uh, Lord, be with us this week. Help us as we read these scriptures. Uh, we love you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Jesus is speaking here, and he says in verse number 10, Verse number 10, he says, If ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments, and abide in his love. You see, we are commanded not to lose the joy of our salvation. Did you know you can do that? I mean, here it is. Let's take account. When you die, let's say you die, uh, and uh, you have you know, the funeral's there for you, you're not there anymore. And boom, you're, you are in heaven. A he heaven. You are in the presence, the physical presence of God Jesus and Jesus Christ. You are there with family members who have went on before. You are in the midst of Abraham and Ruth. You're in the midst of uh, 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 Isaac and Jacob, Paul and Peter. You're in the midst of all these, these guys. You're, hey, man, you're going to meet Jack Hiles. You're going you're gonna to be in the midst of these people. You're like, man, my preacher talked about you. We had a picture of you on the wall, and you look just about the same. Uh, you, you look, man, you look, and, and you're, you're going to be in the presence of these people. Okay, so here you are. You are a born-again Christian. You're going to heaven. You have eternal life. I don't know if you know this or not, but you have eternal life. All these people spending billions of dollars on eternal life, you could walk up to them as just a right man. We are regular, blue-collar, white-collar, and no-collar people. You're so poor, you don't have a collar. Uh, but you, 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 you're just a regular guy, a regular gal, and you can walk up and say, hey, Mr. Bezos, hey, Mr. Musk, hey, Mr. Billionaire, hey, Mr. Soros, hey, Mr. Warren Buffett, hey, Mr. Politician, hey, Mr. Behind-the-scenes, Illuminati kind of, Illuminati, Illuminati kind of, is it Illuminati or Illuminati? Illuminati, Illuminati, uh, 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 and Freemasonry, and all you big wigs, and all you people who are interested in finding the key to eternal life and reversing age and making uh, 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 the body more robotic, 3D body parts. You, I'm not kidding. 3D printed body parts. 
the longevity of life, eternal life. They make movies about it, Indiana Jones and the Ark of the Covenant, and they make all these things, and it's fantasy. And I just sit there and shake my head and kind of laugh because I'm just a regular dude, a regular guy, and I have eternal life. We hand them out for free. People are spending billions, Miss Jennifer, on eternal life, and we can print it for 10 cents. <laughs> Isn't that something? Amen. The Bible says that the wisdom of God, it confounds the wise of the world. It, 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 it confounds them. The, the, the Bible says that the natural man receiveth not the things of God. He, the, the old man, the old nature, the sinful nature of man, it cannot receive it cannot perceive the things of God. It doesn't, there's, it doesn't click. The only way that it clicks is if they say, I'm going to take the faith that I have and place it in Jesus Christ. And when you take your faith and place it in Jesus Christ and you begin to follow him in believer's baptism, the word of God begins to open and begins to blossom and begins to grow. And they look at it and go, wow, my eyes are opened. My eyes have been opened to these things. And here we are, just regular people, small crowd, but each and every single one of us have eternal life. And we can walk up to these billionaires and go, hey, here's eternal life. And they scoff. <clears throat> Science and knowledge lead people away from real knowledge. So here you are, Christian, you have eternal life. Jesus Christ will never leave you, never forsake you. You have a God in heaven who knows the hairs of your head. He loves you. And yet we lose the joy of our salvation. How does that happen? How do we lose it? Now, as I said this morning, God doesn't want us to have a joyless life, a life that walks around, a life that's just hard, a life that's just, now it is hard, but it doesn't mean it has to be joyless. God didn't design that. For you, for the saved individual. And like I said again this morning, I'm not ask, God's not asking you to walk around shouting, saying, hot dog, hot dog, hot dog, amen, hallelujah, glory to God. It's like, yo, dude, temper down, calm down, chill. Like Francisco, just amen in church. I, I, I like it, but when it's appropriate, right? You know what I'm saying? It's, it, it would be weird if you walked around just all the time at work, at home, and people would be like, dude, shh, pe ugh. Be quiet. The Bible says to compel them to come in, not repel them. <laughs> and, and the way that we live our life, we're either compelling or repelling. And I want to compel people. Um, uh, so I'm not saying you have to do that. Uh, but there should be times when you feel like it. Um, I, I shouldn't play it, but maybe I will. I'll go, I'll go. Here we go. These are, uh, let's see if I can find it. Um, well, I, there's a song on here I have right here for, uh, it's an adult choir, and they sing a song called He's Still on the Throne, and the people in the crowd just go nuts. I'm talking, here. Let me, let me give you a sample. Everybody can hear it? Can you hear it? Okay, here we go. I don't know that I'll play the whole thing, but I want you to hear the choir and hear the people. You should feel like doing this every once in a while. I'm not saying being a charismatic. Blood washed by the lamb, amen. My brother's the king. Woo! The son of I am. Yes. Sometimes I forget, and when I forget, I lose the joy of my salvation. I forget to whom I belong. I belong to the King of Kings, the I Am. My brother is Jesus. My inheritance is heaven. He's still on the throne. So when I get caught up in it, I remember he's on the throne. So what could be wrong? Now, man, I can't wait till the crowd gets into it, man. Woo! And freak out. 
And I'm not saying you got to live your life all the way like that. But there's no way you can walk around as a child of God and just be all the time. Something's wrong. You're sick. Your heart's sick. Like I said this morning, happy about heaven? Sing about it. You want to be happy about where you're going? Sing about it. Here we go. They're getting ready to get into it. See it? Shouting hallelujah, amen. There's a couple of guys in church who say amen every once in a while. Francisco makes up for all the ones that don't. It's okay to say amen. It's okay to say, that's right, preacher. That's right, preacher. Yes, preacher. Hallelujah, preacher. Amen, preacher. Sometimes I give up. Here we go. And Satan walks over me. I'm tired of that chump walking on me. Woo! Someone comes by. With words loud and strong, man. You're going to miss out in church if you don't hear the words. Arise, my child, for it is I. I'm still on the throne. Here we go. There's a video of these guys standing up, shouting, holding their Bible, excited that Jesus is still on the throne. Listen to them. You hear that crazy man screaming? Now, that's a little over the top. You got to be able to control yourself, but there's no way you can say, man, heaven's my home. I'm wearing a crown. I'm never, ever going to die. Your bills aren't so heavy. Your burdens aren't so heavy that you can't be remembering that he's on the throne. And you can hear the crowd. You get it. He's still on the throne. But there's no way. Okay, great. You know it. You're saved. You're going to heaven. Jesus is your brother. You're, you're, you're the son of I am. Amen. You got an inheritance in heaven. And, and, and you sit there like a bump on a log. You know that you're going to heaven. Okay, great. But how do I get excited about it? Well, they say in order to get energy, you have to go out and exert yourself. You're like, wait a second, what? To get energy, I have to go burn energy? You have to use it? Yes. Take the food that you eat and turn it into energy and go out and sweat and go out and get burnt and go out and get splinters and go out and stand for a while till your feet hurt and go out and climb up and down stairs and go out and put things together and go out and exert yourself. Okay, it's the same thing with about getting out of the, the, the doldrums and getting out of being Mr. Mopey and getting out of being Mrs. Mopey and saying, man, I'm going to heaven. I know that I am. I'm not the Bible. They, was, they sang it. Sometimes I forget to whom I belong. And it says, man, sometimes I get down and the devil walks over me. Then someone comes by. Man, I want, I, I want to have an interaction with Jesus as many times as I can. I want to drive by Jesus as many times as I can. I want to be the, 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 uh, the, the, uh, uh, the, the, the fella in the ditch who everybody else walked by, but Jesus walks by and picks me, picks me up, the good Samaritan, picks me up out of the ditch and cleans me up and says, arise, my child, it is I, I'm still on the throne. And when I remember that, I can say, hey, burdens, hey, problems, hey, doubt, hey, fear, I am more than a conqueror. If God be for me, who can be against me? Amen. God is in my place. God is in my stead. God will fight for me. Hey, but I got to get on his team. I got to thank you. I got to get in his word. And Jesus said, if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. Why am I so down? You're not keeping his commandments. Why am I so down? You ain't tithing. Brother Jackson, don't talk about money. It's in the Bible, isn't it? Hey, uh, why am I not happy? You're not telling anybody about Jesus. Why am I not happy? You're not serving anyone. Hey, husbands, you want to be happy? Serve your wife. Hey, wives, you want to be happy? Serve your husband. Hey, children, you want to be happy? Serve your parents. I'm not kidding. The Bible says that the wisdom of God is confounding to the lost and to those that are backslidden, to those that are out of it. If ye want joy, Jesus said, if ye keep my commandments, ye shall abide in my love, even as I have kept the Father's commandments and abide in his love. I don't think Jesus, besides one time, and that was on the cross, where he said, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? But I believe every single time Jesus was, everything that Jesus did, he, abide, he abode in Jesus' love. 
He, he knew Jesus loved him. He knew, Je he, or excuse me, he, Jesus knew God loved him. He knew God the Father empowered him. He knew God the Father was with him. No matter what, no matter where, no matter how, no matter what circumstance, he knew that God loved him because Jesus Christ is the physical embodiment of God. That's the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. Some people say, oh, that's not biblical. Yes, it is. It's 110% biblical, the Trinity, the Trinity. So we're not supposed to walk around acting like a fool, but man, oh man, when it's the right time, I guarantee you if you went to a rock concert, yeah, yeah, yeah. The book of Isaiah, I, I, I think it's Isaiah, it's Isaiah or Jeremiah, uh, it basically directly says that going to church is better than a rock concert. I'll find the scripture. I'll read it to you. Going to church is better than going to a rock concert. I'm sick and tired of seeing all these pseudo-Christians who know the right words, but they're going to all these, these fools, these heathens, these people dying and going to hell, leading our nation through the devil's music. Oh, it's just so fun. It's just, you know, who we are. Yeah, and I guarantee you're having alcohol with it. I guarantee you're rubbing up against somebody that you're not married to. I guarantee that you're getting your yayas out with, with your flesh. Well, we love Jesus. No, you don't. The Bible says you don't. If you don't keep your God, Jesus' commandments, you don't love him. Shut up. I know that's rude. I don't mean to be obtuse. I don't mean to be sarcastic. I, don't, I truly don't mean to. It's just a... It's, maybe it's something I need to get a hold of. Maybe I need to be more suave and more patient. But God bless America. We got enough suave and patient and kind and soft-spoken preachers. We need some guys who say, but thus saith the... Ooh, I almost said, thus saith the stinking Lord. Thus saith the Lord. Thus saith the blessed Lord. Jesus, even when we go out and we sin, we did it on purpose. God still hates that sin. That's why repentance is needed. That's why you go back to God and go, oh God... God, I'm so sorry. God says, I can walk with you if that's your feelings towards your actions. But as long as you're over here saying, yeah, 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 party, 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 rock and roll, yeah, 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 drink, 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 smoke, 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 40 k do whatever I want, and you live your life, and there's no repentance. God says, oh, I can't with you. I can't with you. It's just like a child. They grow up, and you have one child who... Who loves you, there's a relationship, but man, he makes a bunch of bonehead mistakes. That'd be me. Oh, you have a kid who makes mistakes, but the kid comes to the parents and Dad, Mom, I don't mean to do these things. I'm trying to get a hold. I, I know I'm a goof. I know I mess up. I know I make the wrong decisions, but I'm trying to make the right ones. I'm trying. You ever just feel bad for somebody because you feel like they have bad luck? And she, I think God looks down at his children, looks at me and says, I can walk, can two walk together unless they be agreed? And I go to God and go, God, here's my iniquity, here's my transgression, here's my sin. Lord, forgive me for the sin that I do that everybody knows I do. Forgive me of the sin that only I know I do. And Lord, forgive me of the sin that I don't even know that I do. Forgive me of those. And God says, cool, we can walk together. You say, well, how is that possible? Because God knows that as long as we are in this flesh, we're going to sin. As long as I'm in this flesh, I'm going to sin. Sometimes on accident, sometimes unknowingly, sometimes on purpose. But then I go to the Lord and go, dear Lord, I, I need forgiveness. And God says, if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. 1 John 1, 9. Amen. Amen. So, that's one child. Then you have another child who steals money out of your purse, steals money out of your wallet, steals your guns, steals stuff from you, uh, breaks your windows, rips, the, rips up the carpet, goes to the bathroom, doesn't clean up after themselves, hogs all the food, goes to your secret stash, whatever that stash is, goes to, your, <laughs> goes to that secret stash, and breaks things and doesn't fix it, doesn't tell you about it, takes the car without permission, uses all the gases and put gas back in. You know what you do to that child? Maybe you love that child, but we're going to have Christmas dinner and you're not invited. Man, I love you. But I, I did not raise you this way. Or you, you raise that child in a certain way and maybe that child becomes, um, uh, uh, gets involved in, 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 in violence with a gang. 
Now, if you can find, get involved with violence in the gang, it pours over into their life. And last I checked, mom and dad are usually collateral damage. Mom and dad's house is collateral damage. You're pulling mom and dad or mom or dad into a fight, into a war. And mom, what mom and dad need to do is say, nope, I love you, but I cannot have a relationship with you. Or excuse me, a fellowship with you. I have a relationship, you're my son, you're my daughter. But the fellowship is gone. No fellowship. I love, I can love you from a distance, right? It's easier to love people from a distance because they're not involved in your life. That gets the same thing with God. And when those people go, when those people come to themselves and they go, man, I just feel like God's not listening. I feel like, yeah, I think some good coming here after one time and go, I did God's not fair. No, no, no. I said, John 15, verse number 10. If you command, keep my commandments, you buy my love. And the reason why people feel loved by Jesus is because they're living in disobedience. So, now I have had bouts with my dad before, not as an even an adult, but as a kid, growing up being dumb, rebellious. And I felt the relationship was broken. You wanna know why? Because I was disobedient. Because I was a bad kid. Who's just like, you're a bad kid, you still care about this thing? Uh, there's hope for me, he says. Uh, no, uh, uh, but, but, but that's the relationship. You're a good kid. God says we can walk together. You're a bad kid. God says, I love you, but what do you want me to do? You're disobedient. You don't follow the rules. You don't follow my law. And Jesus said, if you abide in my commandments, or if you keep my commandments, you shall abide in my love. I just don't feel like God's love. Because you're disobedient, you're drunk. You're disobedient. You're robbing God of your time, talent, and treasure. You shall abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. Now, this excitement that comes from being and keeping his commandments and feeling loved, uh, it's an inward thing. It's an inward thing that bubbles out and becomes an outward thing and just comes out. You've seen it in a Pastor Jackson before. He does his airplane thing. He does his little shimmy like Mark Jackson did, you know, uh, playing for the, the Pacers. Uh, you were probably doing it before Mark Jackson. Uh, uh, but man, what, it, what is that? Is that a show? No, it's something inside coming on the outside, right? right. That's what's happening. Look at Ernesto. I mean, don't look at him. But, but I mean, look, look at him. He, he comes to church. He's got long hair. Man, we love him anyway. No problem. Homeboy cuts it off. Why? Something on the inside, happening on the outside. Dude comes to church, he wears what he's wearing. He's wearing his Bulls jersey. Boo Bulls. Uh, he's, wearing, he's wearing his Bulls jersey. What happens? Listen, what happens? Is he trying to outclass the pack? No, my, my guy puts on a shirt and tie and shoes and, and a suit. He's looking sharp. He told me, I got to get some of them hankies. I'm like, yeah, you, yeah, you, you know, great, great. What is happening? Something on the inside. Amen. Happening on the outside. You see, we do not force anyone around here to have conformity. Conform. You can't come here unless you do this. No, come here until you do this. And if it takes days, weeks, months, or years, the Lord is long-suffering and patient. You know, this isn't some place where, every, where the people who've been here for years are perfect and you need to ascend to our level. Oh, no, our level's pretty low. You can match up with us pretty quick. <laughs> but the Lord is long-suffering. I'm not perfect. Nobody's perfect. We all know that. You can ask lost people. Lost people will say, nobody's perfect. Nobody's perfect. But what's happening to Ernesto and Crystal and the kids? All the kids come dressed up, suits and ties. I love it. And some of them, are, they're too big. It's baggy. That's great. I love that. What are they doing? They're copying dad. They're copying preacher. They're copying... Pastor Jackson, then Lucas in Houston. I want to dress like that. I want to look good. For what? For Is this a show? No, it's just trying to do the best we can for our Lord and Savior. That's why we dress this way, for the Lord. Uh, uh, but it's what is happening? Something on the inside happening on the outside. So when you say, man, praise the Lord, what is that? Something on the inside that's coming out on the outside. And for people to sit there, and, and listen, I don't mean to be judgmental because I don't know people's hearts. Maybe people are just too shy 
And they're like, man, I can't come out of this box that I'm in. But for, but I will give some people the benefit of the doubt because I know them personally. I know how they feel about the Lord. But others just sit there and there's nothing. It's stone. We ought to put you on some European buildings because you look like a gargoyle. Um, uh, but uh, <laughs> you're like, man, dad, you're weird. Yeah, well, get used to it. We were walking through the store last night and uh, I had detergent and I was um, acting like a robot. And Lucas is like, where do you get this from? Grandpa Jackson's not like that. I said, I obviously get it from Grandma Jackson. So, uh, uh, you know, I had a good time with that. But um, uh, something on the inside that comes on the outside. And Jesus told them in, in, in uh, this verse, verse number 10, keep my commandments, you'll abide in my love. So the following words, though, Jesus explains direct correlation, direct connection between keeping the commandments and experiencing joy. Get this. Do you want joy? Here it is, verse number 11. These things have I spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be full. Do you want joy? Keep Jesus' commandments. What are Jesus' commandments? Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, your mind, your strength, and love your neighbor as yourself. Well, how do we love the Lord our God with all our soul and all our might and all our strength? and all? Our, that's a good sermon right there. How, how, how do we do it? Well, number one, get saved. Number two, begin to read the book of Psalm and find out what, what his statutes are, what his commands are, what he wants you to do. Start using Psalm 51 as your prayer of confession about your sin. You're like, I don't know, I even know how to confess. Read Psalm chapter 51 like you wrote it. Read it like you wrote it. Let your heart attach to that chapter and say, God, forgive me of my sin, just like David did. These things have I spoken unto you. Here we go, verse number 10. If you keep my commandments, you abide in my love, even as I have kept my Father's commandments and abide in his love. These things have I spoken unto you, that my joy, my joy, Jesus' joy, might remain in you, and that your joy might be full. So here's the lesson. Here's the lesson, Christian. It's, it's, it's keeping the Lord's commandments is the secret. There's the key. Here's the key. Uh, uh, to experiencing joy is keeping the commandments. Uh, there are several people who gave me um, just little tidbits of advice. Dr. Uh, uh, Pohazi, Dr. Jackson, and Dr. Kevin Manzulin. And he said, amen, he's a doctor to me. Uh, uh, he told me, Brother Jackson, you're the tip of the spear, lead by example. Thanks a lot, that's a lot of pressure. Uh, uh, he said, you know, you lead by example, you're the tip of the spear, lead by, lead by example. Dr. Pohazi told me, Brother Jackson, you just do what's right and Christ will build his church. I said, oh, that was, Brother Kevin put a big burden on me and you just lifted it. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, he said, he said, and I got that. That's a, that's a challenge to me. I, I think of myself sharp. I, they, they say, I, I think, therefore I am. I think, therefore I am. So I think myself sharp. I think myself ready. I think myself right. I think myself heavenly. I think myself righteous. Therefore I am. Now I think it. I don't just have to hear it, but I got to do it. And I am it. So I want to be sharp. I want to be the leader. And Brother Kevin and Brother uh, uh, Pohaz, he's, pray for him. He's got some respiratory things going on. Pray he gets better. He wasn't here today. Um, he said, Christ will build his church. And that didn't mean be lazy and sit around and go, when's he going to build his church? I mean, get to work, do what's right. Christ will build his church. But my dad said to me, he said, man, I, out of all my failures and all my faults and everything I do and don't, everything I do and everything I don't do and everything in between, he said, I just tried to obey the Bible as best I could. Obey the Bible as best. Does Doug Jackson have faults? Yeah, of course. Could he go through and say, man, the beginning of three years about church, I would change that and I wouldn't do that and I would do that and I would do this different and I wouldn't do that and blah, 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 blah. Of course, hindsight's twenty twenty, but God still blessed Three Years Baptist Church through the obedience and efforts of Doug Jackson, who led people to church who also were obedient to the word of God. And when you get a group of people who are all obedient to the word of God, God goes, oh, let's open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing. Let's do that. So how can the Christians stay happy about being saved? Here I am talking about being happy about heaven. 
but happy about salvation because that's what gets you to heaven. How do you not lose the joy of salvation? Be obedient. O B E D I E N C E. Yes, sir. Obedience is the very best way to show that you believe. Yeah, it's the very best way to get blessed. It's the very best way to get God's favor. Could you imagine that? Having God's favor. Imagine going to the richest people in the world and you rub shoulders with them, you're buddies with them. Man, that makes us feel good. Yeah, I know so-and-so and they can help me out. They can get me. It's not what you know, it's who you know. Well, I know the creator of everything. <laughs> Best that. And not only do I know him, but he's my daddy. What? People think you're weird. People think, oh, what that, what that guy's weird. I said it on Facebook before. People want to talk trash. Da, da, da. And I say, uh, oh, no, God's real. I know him personally. So I said, if you know him personally, you should be able to um, materialize him. And I just said, without faith, it is impossible to please him. <laughs> they can't believe because they won't believe. Right, Brother Alex? They can't believe because they won't. I'll say it again and again and again. Brother Joe Van Buren's testimony. He sat out here in the, on the bench and he said, I choose to believe in Jesus Christ. I choose to believe. Nailed it right then and there. Others don't choose. I want to stay happy that I'm saved. On my worst day, if somebody came up to me and said, are you happy you're saved? Yeah, 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 I'm happy I'm saved. <laughs> of course I'm happy I'm saved. What are you, thick? Yeah, I'm happy I'm saved. But do I show that I'm happy that I'm saved? So... The secret is to you is experiencing the joy of Christ himself. But even more than that, it is the secret you experience, not just joy, but the Bible says joy to the fullest, that your joy might be full, full. My joy is like a, a, like a fuel tank. It's full on Sunday, amen? Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. Friday, Saturday, fill up time Sunday. But I don't want an opportunity for salvation. I don't want an opportunity for blessing or anything to be gone by Friday and Saturday. I want my, my joy to stay full. I need it to stay full. How, do I, how does it stay full? I stay obedient. Get up in the morning and walk with the Lord. Get up in the morning and walk with Jesus. Get up in the morning and talk with Jesus. Get up in the morning and talk about Jesus. I, you know what I've started doing with, with Deacon? I've started singing church songs and I started quoting scripture. What's that doing? I don't know. No idea. And I count to five. One, two, three. And he looks at the fingers like, whoa. And if he's crying, I can count. It's great. Uh, he thinks my thumb is different. Uh, but um, uh, we have a good time and I'm quoting scripture to him and I'm singing to him and I'm doing, what's it doing? I don't know, but it may be doing something for me. Am I making him a pastor by doing that? I don't know, but I know that it's doing something joyful for me. I'm talking to my four month old son about Jesus. Does he hear it? I don't, beats me, but I know God gets glorified out of that. And I know that my joy is full about it. So, full joy, full joy. It's not, I don't even think it's a stretch to say that joy is the reward that God gives to every one of those who keeps his commandments. Man, you can't go soul winning and be a grump. When you go out and talk to people about Jesus, it just does something for you. When you go out and do something for somebody, it does something for you. You cannot obey the commandments of Jesus and stay unhappy. You get joy. So there's more evidence of this um, in um, Psalm chapter 51, as I referenced earlier. Uh, David wrote this after he lost his joy. David lost his joy. Now, what caused him to lose his joy? He committed adultery with Bathsheba, and he wrote the um, execution letter for her husband Uriah and put him on the front lines and, and by de facto murdered him. Uh, you find that in 1 Samuel. And we talked about that in Sunday school a couple weeks ago. Terrible. 
What happened to David? He lost his joy. How did he lose his joy? He got out of the commandments of the Lord. Don't commit adultery. He did it. Don't murder. He did it. Man, don't watch that. And we do it. Don't say that. And we say it. Don't go there. And we go there. When we know that the Lord wouldn't go there with us and the Lord wouldn't watch that with us and the Lord wouldn't say that with us. Don't do that. And we do it. We're disobeying the Lord. I told Brother, uh, Brother Pip said it to me yesterday. He's like, I was trying to do this, what you said. Learn to obey every spiritual impulse. Every spirit, hey, get that guy tracked. All right, I'm gonna do it. Uh, hey, go to church. Uh, okay, I'll do it. Learn to obey the spiritual, forgive. Oh, there's a new one. Uh, forgive, be kind, do right, give, help, go, teach. And, and we do it and we learn to obey those spiritual impulses. Do it. And Brother Pip said, I tried to do that the other day and I talked to a lady uh, at the hospital, witnessed to her, and he said she just poured out her testimony. She's from Crown Point, Indiana. She knows all about housing, Henderson College. She's been saved for 20 years. Blah, 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 blah. Started talking about that. Learn to obey these spiritual impulses. And when we learn to obey the spiritual impulses, we're basically ignoring the fleshly impulses. Somebody said, uh, asked a guy, uh, uh, I can't remember the whole story, but basically he said, I've got two dogs fighting in me. Two dogs fighting in me. And somebody asked him, he said, well, which one wins the most? And he said, the one I feed the most. Man, I'm just caught up in sin. You're feeding the dog. Stop feeding the dog. Starve that thing. I want the dog of the flesh to be anemic in my life. I want it to be skinny, bloated. I want it to look like some sub-Saharan death dog. That's what I want. The, the sin the sin and the flesh and the old nature to look like. And I want the new man to look like an angel of God, to be bolstered and strong, ready with his sword, and he's got his full armor on every day. Well, how do I do that? By feeding him. How do I feed him? Uh, there's four messages a week from Three Years Baptist Church you can feed on, especially that stuff from the early 90s and mid-90s and early 2000s. Yeah. Um, uh, that's great stuff. Bob Gray and Jack Howes and John R. Rice and J. Frank Norris and Lester Roloff and Lee Robertson and Carl Hatch and Curtis Hudson and uh, 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 Tom Malone and um, uh, that fellow over there, uh, T Howard Jewell. You can, hey man, thank God for technology. You can feast on these guys. Cassette tapes and CDs and PDFs and uh, MP3s. You can feast on that stuff. Feed that new man. Feed that new man. Feed that new man. Reading your Bible and being kind to others and loving others. How do I love God? By living for him. Well, how do I know how to live for him? Know his word. Baptist distinctives. What's number one? Biblical authority. So right, here's the boss. Hey, Ernesto, ain't nobody going to boss you. I mean, Crystal boss you around. But uh, if you're married, you, you, your wife is your boss. Uh, but, but ain't nobody your boss. Your dad. Your dad, I know. Your, your job is your boss. Your time is your boss. There are, I, I get that, all that. But truly, you're a free man. You can do what you want. Nobody can tell you what to do. And that's dangerous. I said, you, you know what Jake Jackson needs? Jake Jackson needs somebody to tell him what to do. And I could make a joke, but I'm being serious here. Jake Jackson needs somebody to tell him what to do. Folks, I'm a, I'm a Hall of Fame follower for the Lord. You know, I'm not patting myself on I'm saying I can follow. Yo, you give me directions, I'll follow them. You give me a plan, I'll follow it. I always thought, man, dad will grow up. Dad will grow up. Dad will be the, <laughs> dad will be the pastor of the church. I'll be, I always joked about, oh, I'm going to go into business. But man, I'll be his right-hand man. Whatever he needs, whenever he needs it, I'll be the Peter to his Jesus, amen. You know, that's what I'm all about. You, you be the tip and I'll be over on the side, amen. You go through the door and I'm right behind you. <laughs> that's and I got your back. I got your six, they say in the military. I've got your back. That's me. I'm a right hand man. I've got books on how to be a right hand man and be the second man and 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 how to do you know how to be the, the right kind of follower for the pastor. And I read up on that stuff, and that's what I was trying to be. A, a help for the pastor in the ministry. I can do that. And then here I become the tip of the spear, so to speak, the pastor of the church, a leader, but truly. I must remain a follower. 
You see, I, I got caught up in being a leader. Oh no, what do I do? And everybody's looking to me. And uh. You know what Paul said? Y'all come follow me because I'm following Christ. And he'll never lead us down the wrong path. So my confidence has come from, yeah, I'm a leader, but people are following me as I'm following Christ. Well, how do you know where Christ is going and what he wants? If you will make this right here the anthem of your life, you, you read it, you eat it, you sleep it, you, you don't snort it, you, you don't smoke it. You, 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 if you roll up the papers of Scripture and smoke them, it won't do you any good. Um, you won't become more wise, I promise you. There's some, never mind. Uh, there's a, uh, <laughs> there's, this is the, listen, folks, the word of God will open your mind, will open your heart, will open your life. It will change you thoroughly and completely. The word of God changes lives. And Jesus says, if you want joy, 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 yes, down in your heart, the kind that makes the devil run away, obey him. Obey him. David what did he do? Psalm 51, he had to confess it. So here's the ending. Here's my closing. Saints and Christian brethren uh, is that if you want to have genuine joy, like real joy, happy, you know, something about that guy, about that girl, about that family, about that church, genuine joy, you must, you must, you must, you must, you must, you must, you must keep the Lord's commandments. So never forget this. Miss Jennifer, will you come? I'm not, what I'm going to ask you, I'm just going to give you the, I'm just going to give it to you, package up, put a bow on it, and you can walk out with it. But uh, uh, obedience is a joy producer. Sin is a joy killer. Joy killer. I remember living in sin. I had no joy. I remember living in sin, and I was messing everything up. I remember living in sin, and I was unhappy. I'd come in on Sunday and put my face on and act like everything was okay. And it wasn't. The thing that kept me from going, <sighs> blowing up my life, is number one, having wise counselors and people who had compassion that I could go give my faults to and say, ah, and they gave me direction. But the other thing, and it's not particular order, but it was a, com it's a continual confession before the Lord. I'm not kidding you. As much of a dummy I was, Jamie says, was? No, as much as a dummy I was, I could go to the Lord and say, dear God in heaven, what is wrong with me? And he says, you know what's wrong with you, sin dummy, and I would confess my sin before the Lord. Dear, oh God, folks, I'm telling you, if you feel like sin is too much of a burden, if you feel like you're tied up and you're just distraught and your heart is heavy, read Psalm chapter 51 and read it like you're the one that's the one saying it. I believe the Psalms were put there for us to rehearse, for us to voice out. I miss Dr. Harrington. We would go over the, the Psalms so much. Um, and she was always a blessing in my heart. But, but um, uh, the commandments produce joy, and sin kills joy. Man, you're a kill joy. Yeah, I want to be a kill. I don't want to be a kill joy. I want to be a joy producer. And I want others to have joy. I want our church to have joy. I want our families to have joy. How do we do it? Get the sin out. We had a bunch of movies from a long time ago, and there was, Lucas was younger, the Avengers were a big thing, all the superheroes and stuff, but some of them said some really bad words. And you know what happened? Zacchaeus was up in a tree, and Jesus came along and said, Zacchaeus, I'm coming to your house today. And Zacchaeus was like, I gotta run home and get everything out of there that doesn't belong. Get the stuff out of your house that doesn't belong there. If Jesus were to come into the house, mate, there ain't nothing hid from him. Get it out! Get the sin out! As an old CD that's on the blacklist would say, <laughs> get the A, get the, get the heck out. Y'all know what I'm talking about? I don't know what I'm talking about. Uh, I don't, I don't, it's not a cuss word. Skip the world. Hang the world. 
Get the hell out of your home. Get the hell out of your life. Get the hell out of your thought life. Get the things that belong to hell out of your life. Why? So you can have joy. Why? So you can be a somebody doing a something for our Savior. That's what it's all about. What kind of soldier are you? What kind of warrior are you? Man, if you didn't obey the commands in the military, they'd stink and put you in the brig. They'd lock you up, put you in Leavenworth. You're not getting out, you disobedient bum. But Jesus is long-suffering. Yeah, and you're disobedient, and one day you're going to pay for it. Obey God now. Do what's right now. So this makes your choice very, 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 very simple. You can either have sin reigning on the throne of your life, or you can have joy. But I'll tell you this right now, you can't have both at the same time. What did Jesus say? You can't walk with God and, you can't serve God and mammon. You can't hold, you can't, oh man, I love this one. I don't know what preacher said it, but he said, you cannot shack up with the devil and expect God to pay the rent. You mean you can't hold hands with God and the devil? You gotta, you gotta love one and despise the other. But you cannot hold hands with sin and you cannot hold hands with joy and expect to, think that you can hold hands with both of them at the same time. And the lesson is that Dave, that's the lesson that David had to learn. David had to learn the lesson. And truly, it's one that you and I have to learn. Uh, and we can learn it the right way. We can learn it. What did I say? Man, I was talking to somebody. Sometimes I just have these truths that come to me. I said, there's three ways, and I can't remember. I don't even know if I'll be able to remember them. Three ways you can learn a lesson. By others, by others, by your own experience, or by hearing it. And Proverbs says, hear, 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 hear it. You don't have to go through the pain. Somebody came up to me and said the other day, they said, man, I'm sorry for being a bonehead. And I said, man, I just don't want to see you suffer. I don't want to see you have to go through things that you don't have to go through. David killed Goliath, and I'm done. David killed Goliath. I said that 10 minutes ago, didn't I? David killed Goliath. But he didn't go walking around going, all right, where are his brothers at? Sin, folks, sin has got a 1,000% batting average against us in our own flesh. It does not fail. Sin will snatch you up and grab you and rob you of your joy. They say sin takes you further than you want to go, makes you pay more than you want to pay, and makes you stay longer than you want to stay. Sin will wrap you up. It's like a boa constrictor, right? And it crushes you. You can't have joy and live in sin. And anybody who says they can or anybody who looks like they are, they're not. Well, they say they love Jesus and they're doing everything that the world is doing. They're not happy. I promise you they're not. God says they aren't. And let God be true and everyone a liar. I believe God. I believe God. And it's a lesson that we have to learn. Let's learn it the right way. So here's hoping that many of you have already learned and that some of you will learn the right way. And you don't have to. Pastor Jackson's seen it. Listen to my counsel. Listen to my counsel. Listen to my counsel. Listen to my counsel. And they go out and do the opposite of the counsel. And they come back and go, oh, my life is broken and I don't know what to do. <laughs> Listen to me. Well, the pastor seems to have a problem. He thinks he can boss everybody around. No, you're a moron in Jesus' name because the pastor says, oh, God, oh, God, give me wisdom. And he soaks up the word of God and he says, hey, these are the sheep and they need help and they need direction. And when they come to me and I give them counsel and they go out and do the opposite thing. It's like they jump into the jaws of the wolf and they come back and go, I got an owie. Well, what'd you expect? Your brother Jackson, why are you yelling at us? Because you don't have to learn the hard way. You don't have to have the joy of your salvation robbed. The church doesn't have to be dead and dry and boring. The church doesn't have to be that way. It can be a, life, a place of light and a place of life and a place of joy. And I honestly believe we're on that track. I mean, today I felt it. I was like, yeah, this feels good. This is Dad's yelling in the pulpit. Sarah's singing. Jake's getting ready to yell in the pulpit. You're like, well, I just don't like the yelling. Abraham Lincoln said, when I hear a man preach, I'd like to see him as if he's fighting off a swarm of bees. 
I remember my dad fighting a bee one time and he fell off the platform and tore his ACL. <laughs> Thanks a lot, Abraham Lincoln. Uh, uh, but uh, <laughs> bless God, that was Billy Sunday, right? I mean, that guy was a storming, punching, kicking, fighting madman. Uh, Billy Sunday was a, he was legit. Uh, man, I, it blesses my heart to see a bunch of those books gone back there. I was like, man, people ain't going to take these books. And people have taken a lot. I'm like, yeah, hallelujah. I'll read it up. Read it up. But folks, you don't have to lose the joy of yourself. Who wants to lose the joy of your salvation? You might want to be, you do, you want to lose it? Well, I'll come down there and smack you. Uh, I, 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 want to, I don't want to lose it. Man, I want to be happy. I want to have joy and a peace that passes all understanding. How do we do that? O B E D I E N C E. That's all right. I can spell. Obedience, folks. Obedience. And then you begin to grow and blossom. And before you know it, the devil's going to come along and try to throw a haymaker at you. And it'll hurt, but you'll still have joy. That's the greatest thing is somebody getting knocked down and they pop back up. Uh, there's two boxers, heavyweight title. Uh, I think his name is Deontay Wilder and Tyson Fury in their first fight, Deontay Wilder, boom. And Tyson Fury is a born again, testifying, speaking Christian. I mean, he's like, Jesus is the way, the truth. Sir, how do you feel about the fight? Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by him. Well, how do you think about your opponent? God is good. He saved mankind. For God so loved the world that you're like, what? I mean, this is great. And, and Deontay Wilder, boom, 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 knocks him down, you know? And Deontay Wilder's got, yeah, yeah. And all of a sudden, he's laying there. One, two, Three, and I man, if you're a smart boxer, you take as much time as you can. You get rested, you know, in those eight seconds, you, man, you grab every little rest you can. Those boxing gloves get heavy. And you lay down, and he's counting to eight, and he says seven, and he gets up to his knees, eight, and he grabs his gloves, and he looks at me, he's like, you ready? And he's like, I'm ready. And he gets back up, boom, and he comes, and he wins the fight. Then they had a rematch, and man, he took it to him, boom, oh, man, that was a, it was a great fight. Tyson Fury, the dude's like six foot seven. He's like, great. It's awesome. I love boxing. These guys are going at it, and he comes back, and he wins again. I mean, the devil's in the boxing. Man, you, you all know that, that song, Champion of Love? Ladies and gentlemen, may I, introduce, may, uh, may I have your attention? I'd like to introduce to you uh, in this corner of the good and right stands a champion robed in white. His height exceeds the heavens. His weight outweighs the world. His reach reaches everywhere. His age is evermore. He is higher than the highest, greater than the great. No one could ever take his crown away. Amen. He's the champion of love. And he left his hometown to enter this arena to raise his hands in victory for you and me. But an angry crowd crucified the one who wore their crown. And they gladly watched as the champion was going down. But I will never count him out, for I'm a witness of the day he arose to retain his title, champion of love. And Jesus Christ is my example. And the devil can throw everything he can at Three Rivers and your family and you as an individual and your marriage and your children and your finances. But I'll tell you what, if you'll say, listen, I'm broke is a joke, but I made a hundred bucks this week and 10 of it is the Lord's. Could I use that 10? Absolutely. But I guarantee you, if you plant a 10 spot, God can make it a hundred spot. And I'm not one of these prosperity preachers that says, give your money, give your money, give your money. No, give your obedience, give your obedience give your obedience and watch God bless your life and watch you watch yourself not lose the joy of your salvation would you bow your head and close your eyes I want to take a moment and have you pray right where you are there's some of you right now you're struggling you're having a hard time you're having problems you don't know what to do you don't know where to go you don't know what to say I'll tell you right now obey this book man go soul winning well it's Thursday afternoon go soul winning if you're not doing anything Hey, if you made money, tithe, amen. Hey, husbands, love your wives if Christ loved the church. Hey, parents, raise your children in the nurture and admonition of the Lord. Have Bible time. Sit around and read a Bible story. Sit around and, and, and memorize a verse together. Talk about the word of God. Talk about Jesus. Raise them up talking about Jesus. Husband and wives, let's pray together. 
Let's hold hands together. Let's, let's have hopes and dreams of our future and of our children and of our church together. Let's obey the Lord. Let's do what's right. Let's get involved in a ministry. You don't want to lose the joy. You're, a, you're an unhappy Christian. A Christian with a frown is, should, is, a, is really an anomaly. But a Christian who will obey John chapter 15 and find the commandments of the Lord and do them with all their heart, you'll find a joyful Christian. Heavenly Father, forgive us when we're ungrateful. Forgive us when we're forgetful. Lord, we don't, we are, you know what we're made of. The scripture says that we're made of dust. You remember our frame, you remember that we're dust. Our bodies are flesh and bone and one day they'll die and decay and go in the grave and that is our end. But we can make it count. Dust and flesh and bone and the hands of Almighty God is an incredible tool. You are the potter and we are the clay. Heavenly Father, help us to put our lives in your hands. Be obedient to your will. Sacrificial, willing, giving participants of Scripture so we can have joy, so we can be blessed, and we can bless others and give glory to God. Lord, I'd ask that you'd help our weak. Help us to take the joy with us. Uh, protect us, Heavenly Father, uh, from the evil that's out there, the darkness that's out there, a corrupt government, a, a, a corrupt world, as we are the seed and we are the salt and we are the light and we are the water and we are so many things in Scripture. Help us to exemplify that and let the world see it and hear it. Lord, we love you. Thank you for loving us. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. You are dismissed.